<laughs> Good evening, and welcome back to Monster Movie Night. I am your internet horror host, Bobby Gamonster, along with my pal and co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. You are watching and invited to stay for Monster Movie Night here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, home of monster toys, monster magazines, models, and the real thing. Right, Boris? <laughs> I do hope you all out there have had a wonderful vacation, uh, spent your Yule Tide festivities all depressed and, uh, you know, uncheerful. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, it's back again for a brand new year and a brand new season. That's right, 2018. The new year to begin our wonderful, big, and brand new Season 9. <laughs> and do we have some wonderful old horror flicks for you. We've been rummaging around the dungeon over the holidays, right Boris? And we've found some wonderful tidbits in our vaults. In fact, tonight is one of those such uh, tidbits by Roger Corman. It's called the word they the word that well the the end of the world right Boris the end of the world that's right last year we started out with uh, Buchanan's uh, 2889 in the year 2889 which basically was a um, uh, not a ripoff no we we're not going to say ripoff exactly. It's kind of a uh, a homage, I guess you could say, to this film that we have tonight. So since we started last year with that film, I thought it would be ap apropos to start this year's season off right with this film. <laughs> and so, you know, the drill. Get yourself snacks. Get yourself comfortable there in your chairs or couches or beds or wherever you're watching your your uh, internet television right Boris and cover up cut the lights out because tonight is the day the world ended or the end of the world end of the world end of the world let's start it shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is TD Day, total destruction by nuclear weapons. And from this hour forward, the world as we know it no longer exists. And over all the lands and waters of the earth hangs the atomic haze of death. Man has done his best to destroy himself.
but there is a force more powerful than man. And in his infinite wisdom, he has spared a few. It's no use, Louise. I'm afraid you'll never see him again. There's no sign of life. New York, London, Rome, Moscow. Honey, check the Geiger counter. Forty-seven wrenching. It's down another one. We might live. We just might live. I told him this day would come. I begged him to get ready for it. Dad, someone's coming. I can't let him in. You've got to. I only planned this for three. You, me, and Tommy. I've only got provisions for three. No more. Go to your room, Louise. I won't let you do it. Well, there's always one way to get into a place. It's our lives are theirs, girl. I'm letting them in. That wasn't much of a welcome, mister. No, you're not welcome. Put that gun down. Come on, Tony, put it away. Better give it to me. <laughs> Where I go, this goes. I'll look after you later. Louise, take the girl in, give her a fresh change of clothes. Have her washed with some of the water in the sealed jars. Now you, go in there through to my room, change your clothes and wash yourself if you want to stay alive. You sound like you're used to giving orders. It makes two of us. Feed this poor devil, he's done for. I couldn't just let him lie there. 
740 rents. Don't touch him, Louise. You'd better go to my room and change your clothes. It's not too late already. My brother is dead out there. He was only 30 feet from me. He died, and I didn't. I can't understand it. You'd better go and wash now. 22 years old. Doesn't make sense. Didn't you hear me? Go change your clothes. Go on, please. Do what Dad says. You know the irony of it. Of Bob. He was studying for the ministry. He was going to be a man of God. Come on, son. in the house, quickly. I wonder, ma'am, if you could make a place for me and the Ivalo here, because a woodshed will do. Well, I'm afraid not. A time outside someplace and come on in the house. Mm -hmm. You hear that, Diablo? It's none of my doings. Another one, huh? That makes seven of us. Now none of us will make it. You should have let me stop him. I couldn't have lived with that on my conscience, and neither could you. Get pretty good taste in sports shirts, mister. Hey, honey, this is quite a snazzy-looking cotton dress. Stand clear of him, miss. He's lit up like an atomic pile. You can pass it on? I'm not sure, but there's no use taking chances. Then why take chances? What do we need him for? I'll just put him out of his misery. No, you don't. Give me that gun. Once and for all, mister, no one takes my gun. Tony, look out! I ain't gonna like you, mister. I can stand it. Get up. If I use my best judgment, I'd kill you right now. He'll be all right, Captain. He steps out of line once in a while, but push him back hard, and he's all right. Ruby, shut up. You know, ma'am, I was thinking that he could sleep out in the kitchen with me. Who? Diablo. He's always used to having me around with him. Why, he was watching me when I uncovered that gold vein. Oh, I guess, I guess it's about that wide, maybe, Maybe a mile long. Well, no, I'm afraid not. No? Come over here, all of you. I want to talk to you. This is the Geiger counter. Recording 46 engines of radioactivity in this house now. 50 is considered dangerous, 500 fatal. It all depends on the individual. Different people have different absorption capacities. When I want an opinion, I'll ask for it. Now, we may live, we may not. There's a lot we don't know yet. Some of us may be dying now. How long before we could leave this rural paradise? I wish you'd never found your way to it, lady. I got things working for me in Frisco. Big things. How long before we can get out of here? Tell him, Louise. There is no San Francisco. There are no radio signals, long or short wave, from any city in the world. Oh, you're kidding. No, Frisco, I don't believe it. All right, that's enough. Listen to me now. The seven of us in this room may be the beginning of a new era, a new civilization. I knew this day would come. I spent 10 years getting ready for it. Now, if you'll follow me here, I'll show you why we're still alive. This is my house. With its own generating equipment, its own food supply. These hills surrounding are full of lead-bearing ore. They act as a barrier against radioactivity. Through these gorges, these canyons, blows a strong, steady wind with enough velocity to keep the radioactive contamination out of here. By some chance, each of you is in this sheltered area, except the man on the couch. 
He got to it too late. You can see the result. I don't think he'll live through the night. As long as the wind blows and the rains don't come too soon, we may live. That is, if we're not destroyed by other forces. What other forces? Never mind that now. Make no mistake about it. You're not welcome here. This was planned for three people. That's how much food we've got. Divide that among seven of us, we'll find ourselves walking around with aching bellies. I have the key to the storeroom. I and only I will decide when and how much we eat. Any argument about that, I settle it with this. Oh, you're a top man, all right, packing that gun. Just don't let go of it. I don't intend to. You men will sleep in my room. I'll bunk out here. He's got it, too? Maybe, maybe not. We'll know by tomorrow. Cute guy like that. Better be a pity. I'm not gonna die. I thought I was, but I'm not. You'll be all right. You're my friend. I won't forget it. I'm hungry. I need food, meat, red meat, nearly raw. I don't know why, but it'll do me good. I'll leave your order with the chef. Meantime, you better wash up and get into some clean clothes. Geiger counter's accurate, I wouldn't spend too much time out here. You're no stranger to all this, are you? I'm a geologist. My field is uranium exploration. And you'd know that the real force of the atom has never been truly calculated. I think it reached its fulfillment today. But only as it affects our form of life. You think any other form of life could have survived that? I'm only saying that its true force has never been fully understood. Remember the H bomb test at Matsuo some years ago? Mm -hmm. I captained one of the ships. Five days after the blast, I towed the animal ship out of target zero. The world never had a true account of that test. What are you trying to tell me? Coyote. Lots of game in here now. Contaminated game. Fighting for life just like we are. They started coming in a week ago. Just like this valley was Noah's Ark. game out there. I can tell. I can feel it. A man needs meat. But it's, it's contaminated. You'd die if you ate that. <laughs> you would. Not me. I can't live on this. That's all you're going to get for a long time. That's what you think. Doing nicely. Your plant of the future. Celebrates a birthday tomorrow. Three weeks. Three weeks. I thought we'd all be dead by now. But we're not. Even Raddick got out of bed today. 
gives me the creeps. Logically, he should have been dead by now. There's no such thing as logic anymore. He hasn't touched food or water for three weeks. What does he live on? He says he doesn't need food. Last night, he slipped out of the house. Didn't get back until dawn. I'm afraid he's going out of his mind. He, he seems to live in a world all of his own. He's a mutation, Rick. Freak of this new atomic world of ours. I'm going out for a walk. Don't go too far. Stay inside of the house. Why? Because I tell you to. I'm not afraid. I like it out there. Would you go with me? No. Dangerous, Rick. He should be destroyed. Now, Jim, it's important to us that he live. But why? I'm not sure yet. When I am, I'll tell you. At this start, I'll do a few simple dance steps. Boy, the contrast will kill him. Did you hear what I said? No. Turn off that crummy record. You only got eyes and ears for Louise, huh? Shut up. You don't like it when she goes out walking with Rick, do you? I said, shut up. You know, I think I'm beginning to want to live again. It's taken seven weeks. And you. Oh, Louise. What's the matter? Didn't you hear that? Hear what? Let's go into the house, quick. Still moist. Look. Footprints. Radix. You think he ate that rabbit? Forty-nine ranching. Think a man could eat that poisoned meat and live? Yeah. He spent most of his nights right out here in the woods. No human could eat it and live. He defies all the laws of man and God. There may be an entirely new set of laws, Jim, that we know nothing about. Come out and say what you mean. I'm only guessing. We know that even small amounts of radiation produce change. But if, for some reason, a man could live through complete saturation, a thousand generation of changes could have taken place. It's only a theory. Matsuo test. Hmm? What about them? Nothing. Go on with your theory. There may be more Radix. Worse than him. All of us have survived more cumulative exposure than we ever dreamed possible. You were trying to say we might all become like Radix? Stalking the woods at night? Eating raw meat? It's possible. What can we do, Rick? My brother believed the Bible gave strength and revealed a plan for everything. And I hope I find it. 
before I lose my mind. out of the hand of the wicked. I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. I had enough of the Bible when I was a kid. It's easy to see it had no effect on you, Tony. I think you ought to tell them about the rain. Yes, Rick, you're right. We're heading for rain. It'll be coming down through clouds saturated with nuclear death. I'm afraid there'll be no escaping it. But in case the weather clears and we do escape, starting tomorrow, we have to go on half rations. Ha! Huh. What's half a nothing? If we're still here when the weather clears, we'll start planting. I've stored seed and grain. Also, I've got books and materials on every craft needed by man to sustain life. We can all start reading them. Tony Lamont, farmer. We're just about out of water, too. There's a waterfall not far from the house coming out of the mountain. I tested it today, and it's safe. Starting tomorrow, we bathe there. I've used more water in the last two months than I have in 64 years. Maybe that's why you're still alive, Pete. Hmm. even in the sunlight. Boy, what I'd give to be standing back on Broadway listening to that traffic. I didn't realize how isolated it was here. Country style, clean. Probably that's why Tony goes for you. You're something new to him. Tony? Hey, don't take his eyes off you. Can't see me anymore. But just don't you encourage him. Otherwise, I'll make a play for that guy of yours. And that would be unfair competition for you, baby. I'll remember that. back to Mama. He always does. What's the matter, Carol? We're being watched. Where? I can't see anything. There's something moving in the bushes. Oh, it's probably one of the men. Boys will be boys. Come on, let's get out of here. We'll go along the stream. It's quicker that way. I need some breath. Will you hold it a minute? I felt eyes staring at me. I heard it too. Hey, cut that out. Come on. Raddick's not the only one eating this game, Jim. When they finish off the game, we'll be next. This place is cursed. Rick, we've got to kill Raddick. 
He's our only chance to find out what we're up against. We can't kill him. The animals at Matsuo, they predicted something like this. Don't you think it's time you told me about Matsuo? Yes, it is, tonight, after the others have gone to sleep. You'll think I'm crazy, just like the rest of them did. I sneak some more sugar out for you, Pete. Well, thank you, Ruby. You know, he's been trembling ever since he got here. He's scared. Things are going on around here that he don't like. And you know, one of these days we're going to hire Taylor down here. Where will you go? We've got a gold strike on the other side of the hill. Not much use for that stuff now, Pete. No use for it. You ain't got it right, Ruby. All my life, I've been hunting for gold. And now that I've found it, it's up there, and I'm down here. <laughs> You're crazy. But don't feel bad. I think we all are. Thanks for the sugar, Ruby. You know, Diablo is just crazy about sugar. Cut that out, you old conniver. I know what you've been doing with that sugar. When the next batch of moonshine's ready, I want something. <laughs> Another thing out there. How are you feeling, honey? Fine. Where's Rick? He's out snooping. He'll be back soon. I'll go outside and wait for him. Don't go too far from the house, honey. I want to talk to you. I haven't said a dozen words to you since we got here. Look, what's so bad about me? Tell me. I'm not bad looking. I don't smoke, I don't drink. I used to give money to my mother. Let me go. Please, you belong to Ruby. I belong to myself. Some perfume in my bag. Smell nice? It stinks. What are you smoking? Some concoction of Pete. He makes a brew, too. <laughs> Don't that kill you? Throw it away. You really go for it, don't you? Nothing like a country girl who plays hard to get. She makes me sick. Sorority clubs, country clubs. Ready to come home to Ruby? Still got on your mind, haven't you? You're jealous this time. Oh, forget her. There are bigger things to worry about. According to Jim, there, there's only enough food for a month. No, I wouldn't worry about that. I've got an idea we're not going to live that long anyway. Four weeks for six people. How long can two people live on that? Twelve weeks, get it? Yeah. Ah, uh, you and me, Ruby. Three months. After that, it should be all right. Well, how are you going to get rid of four people? Five counting Roddick. Got to get my hands on a gun. But the main thing is, are you with me, baby? vapor like it was just plain fog. Rick, how much do you know about the Matsuo bomb test? Only some rumors that nobody could actually pin down. It's time I showed you something. As I told you, it was my job to tow the animal ship out of target zero. I got the first look at them. A thousand different species. I remember the newspapers said that uh, they'd all been completely destroyed. Papers lied, Rick. Three of them lived through it. Lived through the H-bomb? There was a law against taking photographs. 
Not against sketching what you'd seen. They were placed in cages, male and female of each species. That was a chipmunk. That was alive? It lived for three days. The third survivor was a monkey. Its skin looked like rubber, but it had the feel of metal. Armor plated. Nature's answer to complete nuclear radiation. A million years of evolution with one bomb. They lived for three days. By the time we got back to the inspection ship, they were dead. If we could find out why they died, it might help us. I couldn't figure it out. Except they wouldn't touch food or water. A new species. The ancestors of whatever we have out there. Sometimes I have a feeling of doom. All I know is there are two forms of life fighting for survival here in this valley. And only one of them can win. It's got to be us. You're right, Rick. It's surprising how much strength I've drawn from you. I planned this whole thing just to stay alive. But you've given me a feeling of responsibility towards the future of our kind. Thanks, Jim. I think I'll turn in now. I've thought a lot about it. I'll talk to the girls in the morning. The girls? Yes. They should bear children as soon as possible. Get out of my life. Wind's good. No sign of rain. Blasted girl, I'll speak my piece. I'm a blunt man. I'm listening. All right. Do you like Rick? Yes. Honey, could you love him? A sea captain can perform marriages in an emergency. I want you to marry Rick. I, I want you to have children. There'll be no wedding and no children. Honey, you've got to think of the future. There's to be no future. Yes, there is for you. You have a week to get used to the idea, huh? Aren't you listening to me? Yes, Dad, I'll marry Rick in a week. Be still here if I am. What's the matter, baby? I'm all right. You tell Ruby. I'll speak to Tony and Rick.
This is going to open that storeroom door for me. Can you imagine us with a kid? We won't tell him his old lady was a striptease artist. I wonder what's wrong with Louise. She's been in her room most of the day. Oh, I think she's going off a rocker. Maybe we all are. You still go for her, don't you? She wants no part of you, but you still go for her. All I want is this key to open that storeroom door. You and me, you sick. But it's her you're thinking of, you rotten liar. So I'm a liar. Any friend you had in the world was me. Anyone who loved you was me. You cheap hood. That's for you, lover. Now leave me alone. Well, it's lost some of its density. Not enough, Rick. We won't be able to go up there for two months. We're running out of supplies. A couple of weeks, all we got left. head, the bone structure. The sketches you made at Matsuo. Look. The same mutated skin the animals had. He said there were stronger ones up there. Stage two, this one. Stage three, stronger. Stage four, maybe invulnerable. What about stage one? You didn't mention that. Radic is stage one. That's right. That's right. Uh, we're back for another season, season nine, really big. And uh, we're here with our ep first episode of in the year 2018. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Monster Movie Night has is getting bigger and better every every year. Right, Boris? Exactly. And uh, so would you uh so you would like a, a subscription to our to our our YouTube channel? All right. Well, you go right ahead because it's it's absolutely free. All you got to do is go to www. Uh, well, actually, just go to YouTube and look for Monster Movie Night, and then you can go to www.monstermovienight.com for our website. Right, Boris? As always. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Seymour. Uh, Seymour Crailborn. Okay. Well, yeah, tell Audrey I said hello, all right? Okay, well, see you later. <laughs> anyway. Hmm, that was an interesting... Uh, oh, hello, hello. Uh, what a wonderful film tonight. Really, you know, Roger Corman, he, he knew how to make those, those old films, especially black and white or color. It, it had the atmosphere, right, Boris? And uh, I was just talking to one of his other... Uh, um, uh, Fellows, I guess you could say that he uh, had had to uh, deal with, you know, Seymour Krillborn of uh, Little Shop of Horrors. You know, he was he was this nice little florist guy. Anyway, we've we've had his film years ago, many years ago, right, Boris? <laughs> anyway, how about it? The end of the world. I mean, it just puts you into perspective. I mean, here we are in the year 2018, right, Boris? And it's not the end of the world. No, it may seem like it at times, but it really isn't, right, Boris? No. I mean, we, 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 sure, we have the, uh, what, 
the global warming, yeah, and uh, we have, well, you know, the cities has always had the smog and the air pollution, so, you know, and, and, and with the, the, uh, the oceans are receding a bit, and, and the uh, polar ice caps are melting, and uh, people are not really starving, but, well, there are some that are actually starving, but, and, and, hmm. Uh, what was my point, Boris? Do you know? Oh, I, I guess says, I, I guess the point was well, you know, we've got it pretty good, but it's, at least it's not the end of the world, right, Boris? <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this film, and uh, thought I'd give you a little break to listen to me and Boris palaver and, and talk about nonsensical stuff that uh, probably will never ever happen in your lifetime or mine or or your grandfather's or or you know on down the road, right, Boris? Exactly. So let's let's uh, let's. Let's go back to the film. How, how about that, huh? Okay. Uh, all right. Back to the film. End of the world. End of the world. Sounds like rain. Something's happened to Diablo. Come in. Your father told me you weren't feeling too well. I'm sorry. I'm feeling much better now. Good. Rick, there's something out there. You know that, don't you? We're just guessing. We don't know. I do. Hmm? He tries to talk to me. Remember I told you at the lake I had a tingling sensation? Like I was being charged with electricity. My pulse was pounding and skipping beats and then pounding again. You were just frightened, that's all. It's been coming back every so often. Stronger and stronger. You don't believe me, do you? I'm beginning to believe a lot of things I never believed before. I'm glad you're here with me. You know, he's getting so fidgety, Ruby, I can't do a thing for him. You know, I'm getting out of here, and soon, too. Pete, I need a drink. Well, you've come to the right place. There you are. Thanks. Ruby, you're my friend, and half of that gold is yours. <clears throat> this is a terrible place. Thanks for the poison, Pete. Won't hurt you, mite. You'd like a little of that snort, too, wouldn't you? Mm. Tony. You've been drinking peach shellac again. I can't stand a boozer. We've had fights before, but we straightened them out. Oh, Tony, you and me belong together. We're poured out of the same mold. I wouldn't make book on that baby. I'm turning in. followed me the other night, I saw you. You went over the ridge. You went up there, you'd die. I know. What do you do up there? There's wonderful things happening. What kind of things? Maybe I'll tell you sometime. Why not tell me now? I like it out there. I don't like this house. 
Why do you come back here to sleep? I have an enemy. He, he wants to kill me. So I come here when I'm tired. I will tell you something. What? In a little while, all of you will be dead. <laughs> you think I'm crazy, don't you? I don't know. Out of it. It's starting to come closer to the house. We'll stand night guard. Both of us. I'd use Tony too, but I wouldn't put a gun in his hand. I know his kind. Spawned in bilge water. You keep hoping, don't you? Well, we have to keep trying. Who knows? Somewhere, somehow, we might get something. Hey, Pete, the boat's rocking. Put an anchor on it. They'd start shouting and whistling. And after a while, all you could hear was their breathing. Mmm. It used to scare me the way they breathe. What's my wrenching count? Read me, Daddy! working the Follies when I met Tony. Remember? Now about here, I'd start peeling. As I'd get near the wings, they'd give me a blue spot. And then I'd start to give them the clincher. Everything's all right. Here, I'll take over. Yeah. Diablo's gone. Laura, maybe he broke loose. No, he was untied from the tree. Was Radic in his bed when you came out? No. Come on, let's go after him before it's too late. I don't think he'd come up here. Look, the body's gone. happened to it. He was dragged down there. Here, over here, quick. Radic 
Gate him. The scavenging ghoul. Might not have been Raddick. It was him, all right. We've got to find him, Rick. If we do, I'm going to kill him. Diablo, he's gone. What's the matter, Pete? My burrow. He's gone. All right, Pop. I'll help you find him. I know he's dead. There ain't no use of looking for him no more. Well, we've come this far, Pop. Yeah, there's no sense in turning back now. Come on this way. Come on. Raddick. Look at his arm, Jim. Yeah. What killed him, Rick? Three punctures. Like, like steel daggers. Must be in there somewhere. I'm going after him. No, you'll be fighting on his ground. This thing has to be settled one way or another. Like three steel claws. Defies understanding. Steel claws, Jim. Like the surviving monkey on your animal boat. I knew... I knew he was gone. We should have stayed on the top of the mountain, where we belong. Come on, Pete. Come on home. We'll take care of it. We killed Raddick. You? Well, he had it coming to him. He was crazy. Look at his skin. I saw it. What happened to it? Let's call it atomic skin. That's what radiation did to him. How about our skins? Will that happen to us? It might. We don't know yet. Tony, come on, take Pete home. What's the matter, kid? Didn't you hear it? Hear what? I can't hear anything. I must have been dreaming. Yeah. Go back to sleep, kid. Captain, if that's what you got to do, come back here. You'll die in there. You old fool. Yeah. Oh. Oh.
Jim, what happened? Pete, he went up on the ridge after his fool goal, and I went after him. Into the vapor? Yeah, I hope into the cut. Louise is not to know, Rick. Right. How long were you up there? Long enough. I'm going to tell the others I hurt myself. It'll explain my being in bed. Don't worry. Maybe you've developed an immunity to it. Save your bedside manner. I should have gone with Pete. At least he got somewhere. Well, if it rains now, we'll all be joining him. Rick, you've been on a level with me. I want to know the truth. About what? Look at that. Look at that skin. What's the matter with it? getting like Braddock's. Oh, no, it isn't. You're lying, Rick. It's happening. <sighs> Feeling better, Dad? That's better, honey. You okay? I'm fine. I'm just worried about you, that's all. I'll be all right, baby. Where's Rick? Outside, looking around. I think I'll go outside and look for him. Okay. Someone took one of the knives out of the kitchen. You don't say. I think I'll go out for some air. Let me go with you. You stay here. I'll see you later. Oh, I hate this place. I wish we had never found it. Look, look what's happening to my skin. I've looked at it ten times already. There's nothing wrong with it. You scream and I'll cut. I mean it. Now move that way. Nothing ever come easy to me. All my life I had to claw for things. What do you want? You mean you don't know? There's something new in my life. I haven't had time for your kind of woman. Don't touch me. I can't stand you. Oh, you won't hate me when there's just the two of us. There'd be no point to it. Get what I mean? Come here. Leave me alone! <laughs> Tony, let the little girl go. Get out of here. Run along, honey. I've got a few private words with Mr. Heal. You don't know when you're through, do you? The two of us, you said. But you meant her. Yeah, that's right. Now you know. Your dime store stuff, you're cheap. I didn't know what it meant till just now. She hates you, guts, Tony. You're dirt to her. She'd wish herself dead first. Oh, Tony. What are we fighting about? We're like a couple of kids. I want no part of you. Face it. Oh. 
Happy landing, sweetheart. <laughs> Ruby wouldn't come back with me. We had this little beef, so she stayed outside to cool off. She'll be back when she's good and ready. I have a little something to settle with you myself. Tomorrow, maybe. I'm tired right now. Okay, so you can beat me up. What does that solve? You go near Louise again and I'll... Kill me. You? Ha! <laughs> I haven't had a good laugh all day. I think I'll turn in now. He'll kill you, Rick. Get him first, now. Take my gun. Just sneak up on Tony and empty a gun into him. I thought you knew me better than that. There's a lot at stake. At least carry a gun on you. Here, get one out of the storeroom. Be ready to use it. Nothing, huh? Reminds me of a song. Ten Little Indians. Then they get knocked off one at a time. That's the way it is with us. Four of us left, then... Three little, two little, no little Indians. How long do you think before a guy can go up there? I don't know. Be something to see, what's left of New York or Chicago. Just thought it'd be a good idea. Try that again and I'll kill you. Sure, Captain. I know when I've had it. what it looked like? I didn't see it clearly, but I heard it. Well, it was only 20 feet from you. I didn't hear anything. Take me home. Just take me home. All right. How is she, Rick? She's still pretty badly shaken. I give her a sedative. Hope it works. Did you find out anything else? She insists that it called to her. What about its appearance? I mean, that its skin was like Radix and... Yeah, go on. That it had more than two eyes. Sketches of the monkey at Matsuo. Jim, did that monkey grow any in size? No, no, it didn't. Louise said that, that this thing is man size. That it's man, not animal. How can we fight it, Jim? How, how can we kill it? You're the one that said we'd find an answer lives on contaminated flesh. It thrives on contaminated air. Things that kill men nourish it. The things that kill men nourish it. What are you driving at? Jim, to kill it, we've got to understand it. And we know it has fears. It was close enough to Louise to attack her, but it didn't. It wouldn't follow her into the lake. Why? Sounds like rain out there.
Louise? Louise! Rick! Rick! What's the matter, Jim? See if Louise is all right. Not in there. It's got her. You know how to use an M1 rifle? Get one out of the storeroom. It's all set to use. What's all the noise? It's got her. Go with Rick, Tony. Maybe between the two of you. Oh, no. She's Rick's, remember? You gave her to him. And well, here's your chance to be Mr. All-American Hero. Rick! Close. You won't need the pistol. Slip it under my pillow. Rick. There's no other way out. Use that gun on Louise. Captain, looks like your ship's falling apart, don't it? You've been no help. You wouldn't look for Ruby. You wouldn't help Rick find Louise. You're a low scum. I'm a coward. I only fight when I have to in all my conditions. And one of them is that I know what I'm fighting. That's better, Captain. There are two men and one gun. I like to have it. I don't know you went after Pete. That's why you're so brave. That's why you're moving in. Moving in? <laughs> I'm taking over. The works. The house, Louise, if she gets back. I'd make a better father for her kids than Rick would. They'll be tough. Looks like rain. You still think it'll polish us off? You'll know soon enough.
get back to the house, Louise. I'm going after it. Rick! Well, there's your rain, but good. How long do you think we got to live, Captain? Give me a sample. I'll test it. out there and the lousy rain's got to finish us off. Let me my Geiger account. Clear. It's just rain water. What do you know? So east of this. The lake. I was afraid of the lake. What was afraid of the lake? Anymore. Hear what? The noise. I'm free of him. He tried to speak to me before. He called me by name. Come on. Let's go. You're soaking wet. Rick, what killed him? We'll talk about it later. I feel so sorry for him. Strange I feel that way. Come on, let's go. I'll let your father know we're okay. They must be signaling they're okay. Go out and see. I can see them from the window when they come. Yeah, that's it, all right. They're getting closer. What are you doing with that gun? I'm gonna kill Rick. In God's name, why? Thought you knew why. I want Louise. I think I see them now. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough shot. And <laughs> she's hanging all over him. Get away from that window. Shut up. Pretty soon now. dead, Jim. The rain killed it. I took a test of the rain. Found it free from contamination. Kept praying, but I stopped worrying. I remember the animals on my ship. How they wouldn't touch food or water. And I knew why. That thing was created to 
live in a poisoned world. And the rain came and it was pure. Man created it, but God destroyed it. He brought the rain and fresh air. If he couldn't live, then neither could the others of his kind. There was a voice on the radio while you were gone. There are others out there. There's a future out there for you two. I've got to go and find it. Well, my fiends, <laughs> dreary ones out there, my dearies, enjoy the film? Did you survive it? <laughs> it's only the beginning, after all. It starts with the end. The end is the beginning. The beginning is the end. But this is just the beginning for you, not the end of Monster Movie Night. Right, Boris? Exactly. We have so much planned for you throughout the year, and this is just the beginning. We, we've got thrills and chills and, uh, and other things that will uh, make your spine go up and down and shiver and all that kind of stuff. Right, Boris? <laughs> We've had a wonderful year last year. We're expecting a wonderful year in 2018 for our big season nine. Nine seasons. That's a, that's a pretty good start, you know, Boris? I'm hoping that uh, by the year 2889, we'll be in our 500th or thousandth season somewhere in there i hope so anyway for right now though we've been enjoying starting this wonderful new fear off with you <laughs> and we will do hope that you will return next time for another chilling episode of monster movie night with your internet horror host, me, Bobby Gamunster, and my pal, Boris T. Buzzard. <laughs> Until next time, as always, keep screaming.